Welcome to the Digital Amateur Television Experimenters Night. This is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania. Amateur radio is a worldwide hobby that has many different aspects. Digital television is just one of the many modes and areas that are covered. Maybe you're interested in becoming involved in the DATV Experimenters Nights. Do you realise that you do not have to be a radio amateur or need any ATV equipment to participate anywhere in the world? Also participate in the night by coming up to the Queen's Domain Club Rooms. Yes, right on top of the Queen's Domain in the Heritage Listed Coast Wireless Station. You never know, we might get you in front of the camera or behind doing one of the many roles during the night. We get underway with our program on a Wednesday night from 7.30pm local time. We'll see you soon. This is VK7 OTC. Okay, this is uh, VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV Experimenters Night and we got, uh, we're getting back underway with our March series of DATV Nights. Um, and uh, just a reminder, you can call in uh, either on Repeater 2, I'm listening on uh, Repeater 2, or the uh, YouTube chat channel. I'm uh, looking at uh, the chat right at the moment, so you can certainly leave... Uh, Leave comments or uh, or uh, questions on the uh, the YouTube chat channel. Um, now another reminder that I, I want to uh, a bit of a theme tonight too. Um, last weekend, last week, sorry, the Reese presentation night was uh, a presentation on the ACMA uh, proposed license changes um, and. Uh, the key message I hope people got out of that presentation was please, please, please put in a submission um, as to uh, what you think about the three options um, and uh, please make a submission to the ACMA to, uh, to uh, actually express your, uh, uh, your preference for uh, uh, the particular option that you're, uh, you're wanting them to pursue. So um, please, please, please make a... Uh, uh, number one vote uh, in the uh, WIA poll, but also uh, make a uh, make a submission to the ACMA as per the instructions on the ACMA website. So now one uh, one announcement that we're making tonight is uh, in the last day or so, Reist has uh, and this is Reg uh, Emmett VK seven KK and myself uh, VK seven TW have uploaded. 10 foundation license training videos um, now these uh, these videos were were taken I think back in November uh, at one of our foundation license training days and we've split them up into the elements that make up the syllabus for the foundation license training and made them uh, available uh, on the REST YouTube channels under training and assessment uh, there's a playlist of training and assessment and those 10 uh, videos um, cover each of the aspects of the foundation license training. Now, um, they are 
and what this gives uh, people the ability to do is actually watch these videos uh, they they we would dearly love them to come up to the uh, foundation license training days each uh, every two months that we run but if you're not able to make the day but you are actually able to make uh, just an afternoon to do the assessment then you can certainly uh, use these videos to to go through uh, what we go through in those training days so uh, it's the same content um, and delivered in a very similar similar manner so they are uh, available uh, they've had a remarkable number of hits already uh, I put it out on a couple of Facebook um, relevant Facebook uh, groups and I think Peter Parker even put it out on, on one of the uh, one of the groups so that thank you Peter um, but they are now available on the REST YouTube channel under the uh, training and assessment playlist area so uh, have a look at that now the next <laughs> The next segment is a bit of a is a little bit of a sad a um, uh, little bit of a sad um, <laughs> tale to tell. Um, what you're looking at here is a piece of 300 ohm balance line ribbon, television ribbon, and I think you can probably pick up what the problem with that particular ribbon is. Uh, <laughs> Um, there is uh, uh, the copper that is uh, no longer inside the ribbon. Um, now, um, what this uh, what this is off of is uh, my G5RV, um, and unfortunately, my where my G5RV comes out um, into the outside world, um, there is um, uh, there is a wall, a brick wall. Uh, that unfortunately this piece of ribbon actually bangs up against uh, with the uh, the wind so uh, it eventually got to the point where I couldn't tune up my G5 RV uh, and I thought hmm there's something a bit wrong here and I walked outside and went ah I can see these little uh, these little bits of copper that are uh, uh, not no longer inside the plastic <laughs> So um, what I've done is replace this with 450 ohm uh, balance line uh, and also put um, some of the PVC uh, watering system um, pipe. I've sliced down the side of it and actually put it around it and put some cable ties on it. So um, the, it's banging up against the, uh, the, uh, the PVC pipe and not the, uh, not the actual balance line. So I'm hoping that that's going to... Uh, to last a, uh, a a little bit uh, a little bit longer than uh, what it has in the uh, what it has in the past, but uh, anyway, that's the uh, <laughs> that's what happens when you uh, when you have uh, uh, the Teflon of the um, the balance line banging up against a um, <laughs> banging up against a brick wall, so uh, it eventually gives way. Now. Um, on the weekend, I spent a very enjoyable day uh, up with the Northern Tasmanian Amateur Radio Club. Uh, five, uh, four members from uh, NTARC, um, and they took me up to Mount Arthur, which is uh, Soda Summit, VK7 November Echo, so northeast uh, 008, and it's an eight pointer. It's 1188 meters in height. Um, and in fact, if I go to, I hope, ah, oh, there we go. So, I was staying at uh, Grindelwald um, Village uh, because uh, my wife uh, was attending a harp, uh, harp conference up there uh, for the whole of the long weekend. And um, there's a wonderful little lookout uh, at Grindelwald called uh, Tamar Horn, as in Alpenhorn. Uh, the, the Grindelwald is a sort of a Swiss-themed village, um, and we were staying in one of the very nice shallows up there. Um, and from the lookout, uh, you look across to the uh, to the east, and that is Mount Arthur. Um, so uh, and uh, slightly to the south, so uh, at the uh, at the end, um, here we go, at this end, uh, if you go a little bit further this way, you're at Mount Barrow, um, and then if you go even further, you're at Ben Lomond, so uh, so uh, that gives you a bit of an idea, and then this way, uh, you go off to uh, Bass Strait and um, uh, Cape Barron and Flinders Island. Um, 
it is what's referred to as the northernmost able. Uh, so the ables are uh, mountains that are over a thousand meters in Tasmania. And uh, good evening to Anthony VK7 LAG. Good evening, uh, Anthony. Good to uh, have you on the uh, on the stream. Um, and this is the northernmost able at 1188. So uh, all of the others are to the south of uh, of uh, um, of Mount Arthur. So um, now um, the uh, we we all jumped in a car in Tony's car. We went with uh, Tony, Colin, Peter, and Andre. Um, and as we're going up, there's a couple of uh, couple of uh, nice picture moments. Uh, this is looking um, um, this is looking toward uh, the Western Tiers, actually, um, to the Central Highlands. Um, it was a little hazy off to the Central Highlands in the early morning. Uh, in fact, it was pretty. It was a pretty cool uh, cool morning. But as you can see, it's absolutely blue sky, absolutely no wind. It was a perfect day. Uh, for uh, for bushwalking and going up uh, up mountains, so uh, that's a bit of a panorama of uh, from uh, the south uh, on the left to uh, the the north on the right. So uh, let's go to the next one. Um, now this is uh, once we got up there, um, I took a few uh, few shots. This is the repeater site that I'll uh, I'll show you in a, in a little bit more detail. The uh, the Antark repeater site for VK7 RAA and VK7 RJG. Uh, this is looking um, north, so out there in that haze uh, is Bass Strait, uh, and then over here um, there is a little uh, the older uh, fire tower um, that uh, it, it used to be manned. It's a uh, a little tower right at the moment that's uh, undercover, but uh, all the windows are, uh, are missing. So, uh, so that's uh, that's uh, that's the view, sort of looking north. Um, now, the uh, the repeater site, uh, very very nice repeater site. Um, this is uh, it has a large array of solar panels, um, and you can see this is their uh, internet link uh, down to I think down to Lilydale. Uh, which is just at the foot of uh, Mount Arthur. There's a folded dipole here, and there's a, another tower just here, which is uh, about to be used for uh, all their digital services, which I'll uh, I'll go into in a sec. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, here's uh, here's Colin having a drink. We'd only just got there, and there's Andre. Uh, this is the little repeater hut, um, and I'll I'll show you what's in there in a sec. Um, oh, here we go now. We've got uh, what they've, the way they've set up the uh, the repeater hut, and very nice little uh, insulated repeater hut. This is all insulated with uh, polystyrene foam uh, because it, it, this uh, obviously this mountain uh, ends up with um, snow on it in winter time. Uh, it's high enough to uh, to have snow for uh, most of winter, but they've set it up. There are two racks: uh, the analog rack uh, you can see here, which is RAA, uh, and you can see the big cavities in the bottom of that rack there. Uh, and then there is the digital rack. So this this contains the uh, Fusion, uh, DMR, D-Star, uh, and uh, there's another one. P25, I think. P25. I'm not I'm not quite sure about that, but uh, I think it's P25. Uh, somebody might be able to uh, correct me on that one. Uh, and then there is some shelving, and there's also the uh, the solar panel uh, controller. Uh, in uh, in behind those uh, those shelves. So um, now next one, I think, is a panorama because it's taking a while. Uh, those panorama panorama shots are about 12, uh, 12 megs in um, in size. Oh, oh, hang on. Have we gone past something here? Hang on. Let's go back. Oh no. Okay. No, we were on the next one. Um, so here's um, here's Tony and Colin and Peter and Andre, <laughs> all unpacking the uh, the repeater shed because it's uh, it's filled up with uh, all sorts of bits and pieces uh, that so they don't uh, if they forget something they can uh, you know they can do soldering and all sorts of stuff up there. They can do all of the maintenance they need to do. Uh, without obviously having to go back down again, so which is fantastic. Um, this is um, 
I think this is another shot looking north from a slightly different location. You can see I've panned all the way around so that there is the tower on one side and there's the tower on the other side, which is actually the same tower, uh, but with a panorama shot you, uh, you get a bit of a different perspective. Um, now this is uh, the main tower. Now they, uh, they also look after the uh, Channel 2 CB, uh, UHF CB repeater uh, up, on, up on this location. Uh, in fact, that's how I think they, they, they got the location. They, they uh, struck up a deal uh, where they maintain the uh, Channel 2 CB repeater, which is fantastic. And uh, they also, uh, there's a couple here. These are uh, RJG uh, digital, I think, the little folded dipoles. And there's another folded dipole a bit lower. And there's some verticals and bits and pieces there as well. So this is uh, the antenna system and you can see the ubiquity dish there which uh, um, is the internet connection for the digital. Um, oh, slightly lower, uh, you can see here the panels, um, there's a wind generator there which is, we actually carried that up uh, up, uh, up the mountain. Um, that's a new, uh, new wind generator that just uh, does the charging of the batteries um, over the winter period um, because the, um, the panels um, the panels uh, are in the winter uh, don't uh, charge at the same rate as obviously they do in summer. So, uh, and that's due to ice and snow and all sorts of stuff. Um, oh, here, <laughs> here's the SOTA setup. Um, you can see the 705 in its new case. Um, and uh, there was lots of interest around the SOTA setup. Um, I think everybody, everybody who went up there came across and uh, had a bit of a look and a bit of a poke around and a bit of a uh, a few questions around the 705. I, I did um, I did brave uh, updating the firmware in the 705 uh, before I uh, the night before I went up there, um, and I thought Murphy's going to kick in here and uh, and uh, what's going to end up happening is <laughs> I'm going to break the 705, and uh, but fortunately that didn't happen. So I was operating the uh, version 1.2 firmware in the 705. Um, so uh, so that was quite good. Oh, and hello to uh, to our new foundation licensee, Xavier, Xavier Smith. Hello, Xavier. And uh, I don't know whether Harry's there as well. So uh, good, uh, good day to Harry. And congratulations, Xavier, for uh, for getting your license. Oh no, here's um, now here's the the new uh, wind generator that we took up. Uh, I carried that up uh, with it without the blades. It was yeah, without the blades in uh, we all carried up bits of it. So uh, that's that was mounted and uh, and uh, all the leads soldered in place and uh, it was uh, mounted up there and uh, wired in with its controller. Um, uh, now you can sort uh, you can sort of see just there is that uh, fire spotters tower uh, fire spotters hut I was talking about. There is another I think this is the Way FM um, transmitter location. There are many, many transmitter locations up on Mount Arthur. There's at least five or six uh, for all different services, um, and they're spread out over the over the the uh, the mountain. Uh, so there are quite a number of facilities up there. Um, uh, no, I don't, Xavier. Uh, Xavier's just asked about the ACMA. We'll send a bill for the license. Uh, yes, they will. Uh, I understand the uh, they're uh, they're a little bit slow rod right at the moment, so uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm, I I don't know, um, but uh, I, I uh, hang on, and I, I think you'll see it in the mail in the not too distant future. So uh, so yeah, now I think the next one's a panoram. Yeah, okay. Now what's this? What's this looking at? I think this might be looking north again out to Bass Strait. The haze in the afternoon started to clear by about lunchtime, so the view actually became even better uh, in the afternoon. Um, let's see what's next. Oh, okay, slightly to the northeast. Um, that would be looking out towards Cape Barron and Flinders Island. Uh, what's next? Oh, now, across... Um, this is looking across, down here is Launceston, along the Tamar River, um, and you'll see, uh, I zoomed in here, 
Um, and there was a uh, in up in the Central Highlands, there was uh, quite a large um, quite a large fire that was uh, was burning, and the smoke was going up and into that haze layer um, up in the uh, the Central Highlands. So I don't know whether they were doing burning off or it was an actual fire, but uh, yeah, it was a bit of a concern looking across the uh, the plains there, the Launceston plains. Um, yeah, there it is, all, all zoomed all the way back. So we, you're looking almost due west there. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's the story there. Um, now that's looking. Oh, that's uh, Lilydale. Uh, that's uh, Lilydale. Um, uh, just at the foot of uh, Mount uh, Mount Arthur, little township just uh, just here. Uh, so that is looking to the, uh, the sort of in a northeasterly direction. So uh, so yeah. Um, oh, here we go. Now here's the crew. This is uh, Tony, uh, Peter, Colin, and Andre. Um, I got that uh, <laughs> we were just uh, we were just packing up and getting ready to uh, to head down down the mountain. So uh, this uh, this is the crew that I went up with, and thank you very much to uh, all of them for. For showing me, uh, showing me the way up to uh, Mount Arthur, and in fact driving, uh, driving all the way up to the end of the track in the uh, in the four wheel drive, which is fantastic. It was, uh, <laughs> it was uh, uh, where where you uh, if you don't have a four wheel drive, you you have to stop uh, a fair way down and actually walk uh, walk uh, walk the follow trail. Uh, whereas if you're in a four-wheel drive, you can drive all the way to the end, and then it's about a 600 metre. I think Tony said it was a 600 metre rise uh, up the mountain uh, to the repeater site. So, uh, so uh, that was uh, that was a good walk. So, uh, thank you to uh, to those guys who put up with me, uh, put up with me uh, doing my soda activation and all sorts of things. So uh, it's good stuff, and showed me. Showed me around the repeater uh, repeater site and all the things that they do up there. So uh, very impressive, uh, very impressive repeater site. I think there might be a few of these because I didn't want to uh, didn't want to miss it. Oh, and then <laughs> this is us walking down the mountain. So uh, we're uh, we're about to head and descend down uh, from there. I, I tell you what, there were quite a few people up there uh, on that uh, that uh, that particular day. Uh, they were. Um, there were quite a few people coming up with with dogs and all sorts of things, so uh, they were uh, uh, they were uh, they were having uh, having lots of fun. There was a uh, a couple of guys who uh, were from Canberra uh, who uh, came up and uh, were very interested in the uh, the soda activation, and I, uh, I I took them through the equipment and all the stuff that we were there, and they had a bit of a wet a rest and a, a bit of a drinks break and all of that sort of stuff. So. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, it was a good, uh, definitely a good um, a good day, and as you can see, the weather was a fantastic. It was just uh, phenomenal, and that's that's Mount Arthur. Uh, we were up here, obviously the highest point up here. Uh, so uh, so yeah, that's uh, Mount Arthur. Quite a quite a sort of a, a tabletop sort of mountain, um, but there is uh, uh, communications facilities all over the the, uh, the top of. Uh, the top of this, so uh, just uh, just phenomenal. Um, so that's um, that's uh, VK7 November Echo 008, and it's an eight pointer, eleven eighty eight meters in uh, in height. So uh, so there you go. Now the next the next uh, little thing I wanted to do tonight was. Um, those people who uh, and there's quite a few members of the um, the radio amateurs old timers club, and this is the old timers new o news OTN. Um, if you have had your um, amateur radio license for 25 years or more, uh, you can actually become a full member um, of um, of the radio amateurs old timers club of Australia. Um, if you've had it under 25 years, you can become an associate member. Um, and you get uh, you get one of these um, you get one of these I think every two two months I think it is um, very well produced um, very well produced journal um, and uh, I just thought I'd go through a few few things they have 
some fantastic, um, absolutely fantastic stories in here, um, which I'll we'll head to. Um, you can see here if we zoom out. Okay, um, this is uh, this is um, uh, Bruce Bethels and uh, Ian Godsell. So, and I always forget their call signs. Bruce is um, VK3 Uniform Victor, and Ian Godsell's VK3 uh, Juliet Sierra. So uh, they're actually putting together the uh, RAOTC broadcast that you uh, you hear uh, on the uh, the first couple of uh, uh, the first week of um, the the month. There's a uh, a article in here about the Junkers um, Morse key, the uh, the German uh, Morse key by uh, Hermann Willemsen, which is um, he's a, a, a Morse key collector. Um, very interesting article on the Hermannsburg transmitter used a Ford Model T coil. <laughs> um, Hermannsburg is in uh, the Northern Territory. It is a uh, a Lutheran mission sta uh, station. Um, I've been there a couple of times. Uh, been through there a couple of times. Uh, fascinating place. Um, James Russell Godding, VK3 DM, um, and uh, his life. Um, a wonderful article by Brian Tideman, who is VK3 BCZ. My time in the Adelaide University Radio Club, and I actually thought about Mike Groth here, uh, VK7 MJ, <laughs> and uh, his uh, <laughs> his time at the Adelaide University Radio Club. Uh, no Roses on a uh, Sailor's Grave, again by, um, by uh, uh, Herman Willinson, uh, about uh, marine radio operators. Uh, the Secret Wireless Intercept War, fascinating little article um, from Steve Mason, um, uh, and, and this is Steve here, unfortunately he's silent key, uh, but about his, uh, his, uh, uh, his time in the, uh, in the services and uh, intercepting uh, interesting uh, interesting uh, uh, radio uh, radio transmissions. Uh, recollection of, of uh, Ash Wednesday by Graham Scott, VK2 uh, uh, KE. Um, geothermal power station in, Victor in Victoria, in, in, New, in New Zealand by uh, Lloyd Butler, VK5 BR. Um, the middle is always the uh, RAOTC members list, uh, and there is uh, quite a few uh, VK7 members. That's all VK7 members in here, uh, so uh, fantastic. Um, MEMS technology, a rapidly growing industry. This is the, the really, really small um, systems and, uh, and uh, structures uh, that are at microscopic scale. Um, total less is uh, total width is less than one millimeter for these this these gears and this gearing arrangement, um, and there's all sorts of things comb uh, electrostatic comb drives as a MEMS device. Um, another uh, Morse key article uh, visiting the uh, Museum of Flight in Boeing Field, Seattle, by Lloyd Butler. Uh, My electronics journey in Radio Station Three MA by Mike Alsop. Uh, VK8MA. Um, we had one of those valves here the other day. Um, magnetos and their uses. Uh, again by Herman Willinson. Um, International Message Relay System Center. Some interesting uh, early computing uh, uh, with the Univac and, and uh, core memories and the message relay system. Anyway, it goes on and on and on. And there's also articles. Um, Dangers of Electromagnetic Fields by uh, Lloyd Butler, which also includes the design for a field strength meter, um, an ARRL field strength meter. So uh, very, very interesting uh, article. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, all of um, all of sixty odd pages. Um, I, fantastically well produced uh, magazine, and definitely uh, definitely worth a. Uh, Worth a look if you're uh, if you're wanting some uh, some fascinating reading uh, reading matter. So uh, so yeah, the uh, old timers news from the uh, radio 
Amateurs Old Timers Club of Australia. So uh, we're definitely worth a uh, worth a bit of a look. And their broadcasts on the um, I think it's the first Monday night of uh, the month. Uh, well and truly uh, worth a listen and a callback. And it, it goes out on the um, the VK7 RAA and VK7 uh, RTC uh, um, repeaters. So on uh, on Mount Arthur and also on uh, Mount uh, Mount Wellington. So um, now, 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 now. Let me just go to the next one. I was going to do this last time, and in fact, I might leave that for next time. That's uh, how we going for time. It's eight o'clock. Cool, 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 cool. So. Um, the other thing I just wanted to show you was uh, a bit of equipment that I had arrive from um, Doug Friend, who is VK4OE. He advertised some equipment, some microwave equipment. He's a, um, a prolific microwave experimenter um, and advertised uh, on the, uh, the uh, VK microwave list that the, he had a whole lot of things that he was getting rid of. And the thing that jumped out for me was um, this particular horn um, and he, Doug has actually tuned it for 3398 megahertz which is the the uh, the band that we um, uh, that we use now let me just let's see if we can we can get oh you might be able to see it <laughs> <laughs> right down in, in um Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> um the uh, the little uh, quarter wave um element uh it ch and the tuning stub, um the tuning screw as well. Um that uh, is right down at the back of the um the uh, the um there we go. Uh, the back of the horn um, and uh, we'll just zoom back out again here um, now it, it can be used uh, obviously as a horn antenna in its own right um, I, I would have to look up what the uh, what the gain of it is at 3.3 um, at gigs uh, but very nicely made um, and I'm intending to actually use this on a um, offset feed dish that I'm, I was originally using on 10 gigs. I have to make up an adapter because it's uh, a rectangle, uh, not a, uh, a circle, which is what I use on 10 gigs. But anyway, I'll make the adapter up and uh, and see uh, how I go with uh, uh, getting a slightly uh, slightly more uh, slightly increased gain on uh, the uh, the 3.3 gig. Uh, band and see whether I can't uh, I can't improve my mega signal that goes out right at the moment, which uh, is I think next to uh, next to nothing. So uh, um, great great for local contacts in the club, but as soon as we go outside of the club, it seems to be uh, a bit of an issue. So uh, we'll uh, we'll see <laughs> we'll see whether we can improve it with uh, with this particular uh, this particular horn antenna uh, by itself initially, but uh, then we'll. We'll try and put it on a dish and uh, see how we go. So um, that's, uh, uh, and I'll uh, report back as to how we uh, how we actually go with that. I hope I can uh, maybe get it uh, up and going by um, the uh, the John Moyle Memorial Field Day, which uh, I'll do a bit of a a, a a reminder for. The John Moyle Memorial Field Day focuses on portable operation. Uh, it goes for 24 hours uh, over the 20th and 21st of March. Now, that coincides with the Meet the Voice barbecue. Uh, the Meet the Voice barbecue is going ahead uh, this year. It's at the Ross Caravan Park. The main event is on the 21st of March, which is the Sunday from 11 a.m. Uh, and that includes the, uh, the presentation of the uh, Sewing Circle sorry the sewing machine award by the sewing circle net uh, and that goes to the most loquacious amateur and you're going to have to look that up <laughs> the most loquacious which is the most talkative uh, and the most uh, I don't know ostentatious or whatever you want to call it uh, amateur for the uh, the previous year 
and it is um, it is uh, awarded by the previous uh, recipient of the sewing machine award. So that uh, that starts at 11 a.m. on uh, on Sunday the 21st, and many of us go up there uh, on the uh, on the Saturday or earlier, and they camp at the Ross Caravan Park uh, and operate um, in the the John Moyle Memorial Field Day as a portable station, uh, and uh, get uh, lots of uh, lots of contacts, etc. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, the John Moyle Memorial Field Day and the Meet the Voice uh, barbecue up at Ross, and it's a, a BYO barbecue. So the barbecue plates are hot, and you can uh, cook up your uh, your barbecue and have that for uh, lunch on the Sunday. Now, uh, another reminder: our presentation night for April. Uh, we have uh, just after Easter uh, on the Wednesday night from 7:30 p.m. We've got Andrew Elwell, uh, who is uh, a member of REST, and uh, Andrew actually works for the Pawsey Supercomputing Centre in Western Australia, and uh, as a, a system a system admin, I, I think uh, but he'll tell us all about that and what uh, what it means to be a uh, supercomputing centre for a start um, and some of the fascinating work they're doing with the square kilometer array uh, and the processing of the data the huge amounts of data that are coming out of the square kilometer array so uh, that's the the first wednesday night in april i think it's the seventh from memory someone might uh, might correct me there but it's the seventh from 7 30 uh, p.m uh, so uh, one not to be missed now another one not to be missed is in may our May presentation night is also uh, by uh, Dr. Mike Groth, VK7MJ, who gave us that wonderful talk on listening to the planets um, a, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, now, Mike will be talking on lightning, whistlers, and other related phenomenon for, or phenomena. Um, so, another one not to be missed, and that's our, the first Wednesday night in May. So uh, we've got a couple of uh, really great presentations coming up for uh, members and uh, friends um, who uh, would like to come up and uh, and have a look. So we will put out a bit of a call back. I heard a word from our sponsor just then. So this is VK7 uh, OTC uh, putting the call out for any uh, Questions or comments for our uh, from our DATV experimenters night uh, tonight uh, over. So, so reminder: the um, presentation nights and also the uh, the John Moyle Memorial Field Day and the Meet the Voice. So, uh, doesn't sound like there's anybody on repeater two. Uh, we've got Anthony and Xavier on uh, on the chat channel, so uh, I think I've answered their questions. So thank you very much. If there is any other questions, please, please, please throw it in there. Uh, no problems, Anthony. Cool. I hope, <laughs> I hope there was something in there. Uh, we'll have a, a, another uh, another DATV night next week, and uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll have a, a hopefully a few interesting uh, spectrum analyzer um, uh, possibly demonstrations. Uh, and also uh, a few other areas that uh, you can use spectrum analyzers for. So uh, working on a little bit of a presentation there uh, for uh, for a coming uh, night. And of course, I'm sure we'll have a uh, update from uh, from Rex VK7 MO and uh, and Co with the the 10 gigs and the optical uh, side of things. So uh, so yeah. Uh, we'll uh, now our present uh, our videos for tonight for our RF viewers. Um, uh, I have put the presentation night from last week video. Uh, given the importance of the fact that it is all about the ACMA proposed license changes, uh, we really need to get the word out to all uh, all amateurs and concerned licensees around these proposed changes um, and uh, please 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 make a submission um, if you don't do anything else uh, this year with the ACMA other than pay your license fee please 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 uh, make a submission to them on uh, the way that you want to see future licensing for amateur radio so uh, 
so please get the word out um, complete the uh, WIA poll if you're registered or you can register uh, and also uh, make your own submission to the ACMA so uh, please 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 do that um, okay this is uh, VK7 OTC the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV experimenters nights and we'll catch you next Wednesday night from 7.30 p.m. 73. Oh. And go ahead, uh, Ron, Vico 7 rm Vico 7 otc Justin, just another good, uh, interesting night, so uh, thank you very much. Oh, no problems at all, Ron, no problems at all. Thanks, uh, glad you got something uh, something out of it, and a bit of a view of uh, uh, Vico 7 rwa and RJG, so uh, up on Mount Arthur, so... Uh, Always good to uh, to see uh, see those things in the in the flesh, over. That is certainly interesting, and uh, they've got a good setup. Pity we didn't have uh, stuff on Mount Wellington. Cheers. <laughs> oh well, we've got uh, Hayden's uh, Hayden's uh, um, repeater on Mount Wellington, the 432, the 70 centimetre one. So uh, does a uh, excellent job and has fantastic coverage. So uh, good stuff. But uh, anyway. Thanks, Ron, for calling in, and uh, have a good week. Yeah, cheers. Okay, we'll uh, we'll head to our uh, video for tonight. This is VK7OTC seventy three.